You know, I have to come out of the closet. I love comics. And even before I knew there were queer comics, I had kind of a queer take on comics. I remember Prince Valiant in the Sunday paper when I was a boy. And, well, I thought Prince Valiant was just rockingly handsome. Anyway, comics have now become big business, but also a way we look and see our own community. Our guest right now, Awan Mance, she's going to talk to us about her work, but also about the queers and comic confidence. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you very much. Good to be here. I love what you said when the show started. I said, before it started, I said, how long have you been a comic? And you said, the only <laughs> thing I've been longer than a comic was black. Oh, uh, <laughs> when, when did you realize that you could do this work that inspired you? Well, I realized I could be an artist. Um, I never thought I couldn't be an artist. And so I spent many, many years doing visual art, um, illustration, drawing, painting, and I still do that. Um, but it really wasn't until I started meeting queer comic artists at uh, various zine comic fests that I realized, oh, actually, I think I can do this. Right. And what is the Awan look? What, what is it about your <laughs> comics that is unique? I think my look is it relies very much on simple uh, drawings, line drawings. Uh, I love the heavy black line of a lot of street art. Um, and um, most of my comics kind of are either about me or about African-American community. And so mm -hmm. it's that kind of signature way that I draw black people, emphasizing our facial features, our noses, our hair, our lips. Mm -hmm. Why do you think, well, let me, let me put it another way. Do you think that queer comics mm -hmm. are innately political? I do. I do. Um, in some ways, when uh, an identity group or a group of people who are supposed to be invisible and silent actually take it upon themselves not just to write, but to add pictures, to really help you visualize who they are, it's transgressive. It upsets the apple cart. Yeah, I mean, again, I was joking about, you know, me liking Prince Valiant when I was a kid. <laughs> right. But, you know, there was quite a trajectory from Prince Valiant to North Star, the first, right. you know, openly gay superhero. And for the first time, I realized, oh, those attractive... Uh, people that I was looking at in the comics weren't just for straight people. They were for me, too. What do you think was the dividing line between when queer comics became not just a subcategory, but really it's, it's something in its own right? It's an interesting thing to consider because some of the earliest representations of queer people uh, back in the 1920s were actually created by heterosexual artists or artists whose sexual orientation we don't know now. Mm -hmm. But it really turned a corner, I would say, starting in the 1980s. Um, that's when you start to see some of the mainstream comics um, adopt representations of LGBTQ folks. Um, but, you know, I'm really not giving the due to the folks who are the real innovators. Back in the 50s and 60s is really when we see LGBTQ people, particularly gay men, stepping in and representing themselves and particularly their sexuality and their sex lives in really fun, interesting ways in comics. Yeah, well, you, have, you know, I mean, people now consider just kind of a, a sexualized representation, but someone like Tom of Finland and right. that sort of stuff, right. that was for a lot of people, including me, one of the first times we had a positive... Yep. notion uh, of gay sexuality. Uh, as a black lesbian, how important do you think your work is to telling your community you have a place? Um, that's a really interesting question. I'm still new to making comics. Mm -hmm. um, I do a series called Gender Studies that's autobiographical. And so I'm really getting a sense of how many LGBTQ people of African descent are out there. And I do believe that the particularity of each of our experiences as queer black women, and frankly as queer black people of all genders, mm -hmm. um, will track and connect with someone who is also black. And so I think the more of us who tell our stories, the more important. You know, I, I'm a lover of comics. And as I mentioned to you, I, I work with George Lucas's Museum of Narrative Art, which is a huge comic collection. Summerlee Kasher at the Cartoon Art Museum. I mean, I, I love comics. But it strikes me as a gay man, a consumer mm. of comics, that some of the sharpest, not just best drawn, but best messaged comics is coming out of communities of color. Do you think because there is still even, whether we realize it or not, uh, a racism within the gay community? that still we're, even our comics are too white? Well, I certainly think that, uh, you know, it's a cliche, but to say that uh, people of color are underrepresented mm -hmm. in comics. I've been to many comic festivals, and as terms of consumers, I'm always pleased to see, particularly uh, people of African descent, Latinx folks, represented much more than I thought. But on the other side of the table, as creators, I don't really see nearly as many LGBTQ Latinx and people of African descent making inroads in terms of Asian American community, um, mm -hmm. but not so much um, in terms of black and Latino folks. So talk to me about the Queers and Comics Conference. Ah, 
it's very exciting. I'm looking forward to it. It uh, started um, in uh, New York at City University in 2015, and they had amazing keynotes, Alison Bechdel and Howard Cruz, known for Wendell. Um, and this year is the first time it's going to be on the West Coast at CCA in San Francisco. Which is the uh, California College of, That's of the right. Arts. So in two years, it's really kind of exploded. It really has. I mean, it's been a watershed moment for comics, particularly indie production, comic zines, all of these types of things. But we're going to, it's, it's, it has exploded and it's reflected in our um, range of activities. We're going to have about 40 panels and workshops with 160 presenters. Yeah. You mentioned someone that's become kind of an icon for yes. not only the LGBT <laughs> community, but for the comics community, Alison Bechtel, right. who of course started here and was, you know, the impetus and creator of, well, a Tony Award winner. Whoever thought we'd not right. only have a Tony Award winning for best musical that was gay, but was lesbian based on <laughs> a comic. Right. You haven't met Alison Bechtel yet. I have not. Is she going to be at the conference? <laughs> I am not aware of that. We have two other keynotes this year uh -huh. um, representing um, actually two keynotes of color. Um, uh, Gingoro Togame, uh, amazing uh, Japanese comic who does erotic art, amazing, beautiful representations of men. And then Mariko T um, uh, Tamaki, who does really interesting, really textured graphic novels about uh, coming of age and is just a beautiful artist. And so those are going to be our keynotes. I'm really excited. to. I'm going to make sure to meet them. Yeah. <laughs> what would you say to someone who thinks, you know, gosh, I just can't draw, but I have this, I have this urge to express mm -hmm. myself in the way that comics allows you to do? I mean, I remember when Strip Aids <laughs> came out and was, you know, putting the fight against AIDS right. in comics form. Somehow you were able to say things in a comic strip that you couldn't in person. What would you say to this young comic that's trying to find their voice? We've got about a minute left. I would say that you don't have to be able to draw to be able to express <laughs> yourself in images. You just have to have an imagination and an idea about how you'd like to use space. Um, you just need to be able to create an image well enough that we can tell who's speaking and who is not. I mean, it's very simple. When did that change? I mean, you, you would think, God, the first thing, if I want to be a comic boy, I better be a talented artist. Well, I think when you think of some of our um, iconic uh, comics of any sexual orientation, think about something like Charlie Brown. Um, you know, Charles Schulz was actually a really good artist, but those drawings are so simple. Um, and so um, when you look back, you realize some of the most resonant characters are some of the most simply drawn. Got it. And the conference again is April? April 14th and 15th. I look forward to seeing you there. We've been speaking with Awan Mance comic and well she's told us where to be on april 20th the queer and comics conference right here in san francisco i'm david perry we'll see you next week on 10 percent